tuning in to watch this video. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for new punk rock videos every week and tap the bell to get notified when new videos drop. Go, go, My name is Aaron Miklo, and I'm here with Moscow Death Brigade at Rebellion. Introduce yourselves. Hey, what's up, everybody? We're Moscow Death Brigade. I'm uh, Bolkada Vlad. I'm Skim SG. I'm so excited to be here with you guys. I've heard such amazing things. The first time I heard of you guys was actually when I interviewed the Cundies here at Rebellion in 2019. One of them was wearing one of your shirts. And when I dropped the interview, people were like, oh my God, Moscow Death Brigade. And that's kind of what put you guys on my radar. Nice, thank you. Thanks for having thank us. You. Yeah, yeah. we're really happy to be on your show. Thanks a lot. <laughs> So your guys' music, it is kind of unique in the way. I don't really know any other bands that I can compare to what your sound is. It's kind of like hip hop and then like kind of dance EDM type music and then punk. Can you talk more about how you kind of developed your sound? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, so uh, we all come from like punk rock, hardcore and heavy metal backgrounds. Yeah. Uh, but we also, uh, as we grew up, we were listening to a lot of uh, that music. But then we started getting into hip hop, starting getting into electronic music. And when we started the band, we wanted to make the sound, uh, the music that we wanted to hear and we wouldn't necessarily find it elsewhere. So we started mixing all the stuff uh, that we loved. Yeah. Uh, and uh, our first album, Hoods Up, uh, was more like uh, punk rock instrumentals and us rap on top of them or more of like strict like underground hip-hop mm -hmm. and then with the second album bolt cutter we started doing a lot of electronic like dance uh, some dance beats and like drum and bass and with the third album we started mixing it all together a lot of punk and heavy metal and electronic so we usually uh, listen to our music and if we like it we release it and then uh, we are yeah. very lucky that there are a lot of people who actually enjoy it as well and we you know we can see it at shows we know that people listen to a lot of our stuff and people do tattoos uh, of Moscow Death Brigade, which is like the highest, uh, you know, the highest uh, flattery. thing. Yeah, yeah flattery it's really thing, flattering. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's how that's how we got to it. That's awesome. Well, so I want to talk about how you guys why do you wear the ski masks your your aesthetic is the ski masks and the track suits how did that come about uh well uh since uh, we mostly uh coming from uh street activism and uh, a militant anti-fascist uh, scene uh, and also illegal graffiti scene so it came uh, it, it just came naturally uh, because when we started the band uh it was like rough times in Russia, uh, but there were a lot of Nazis uh, who were like supported by the authorities. And uh, there was like a street war, like daily street war. And uh, like punks, hardcore kids, anti-fi activists were really, really outnumbered. And uh, most of our shows got attacked by Nazis. There were a lot of fights. And uh, yeah, so uh, like it, it was, it, 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 it kind of was wise on the like uh, on 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 on, other, uh, on you the don't first. want cops to know how you look yeah. basically yeah yeah because because you're also involved in like uh, writing graffiti on trains and walls and also yeah take part in demos and uh, like yeah. fighting like bad people so it's not a good idea to just parade with an open face everywhere uh, and uh, at the same time uh, we just uh, uh, love the ski masks because uh, they uh, bring this message to the people and show what we are and uh, where we're coming from. Yeah. And uh, also, it looks it looks good. So it's basically part of the image. People see you in a ski mask, yeah. and they, they know what's up. And when we started, we actually didn't have ski masks in Russia in the first uh, like uh, yeah, the first shows we played. First without, shows we played like masks. that. And then we wanted to add something interesting, add a little bit of mystery. So all of that kind of like uh, got together, and also paying tribute to you know the graffiti and everything and street activism. <laughs> Right, right, that's why I'm a FJP. Take, 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 right, right, that's why I'
Yeah, that's really cool. I was wondering if it was something about that of just kind of hiding your face. My first guess about it was maybe because living in Russia, it's is it still difficult there? I mean, this, there's a big stigma around your country of just yeah, the, the hardships that you've been through. And you, you generally don't really want police to, and authorities to know uh, who you are. And we actually don't know if they do know who we are or not. So you know, yeah. we, we used to have some, we have to have quite some trouble back home. Yeah. And, uh, so it's, yeah. Oh, wow. What kind of trouble did you guys have? Well, we are, we were like on the blacklist where you can't, can't really play in Russia because we are like an extremist band. Yeah. Uh, and, um, so yeah that's that's some of the trouble and the police were like oh who these who these guys are and stuff so but you guys do play shows sometimes i think i saw in another interview that it'll be like you'll play a show in russia but you won't really announce the location we we did that yeah we definitely did that and it was sort of kind of like uh how do you say that not a secret show but like you know who's coming to the show and it'll be like last moment announcement and then yeah. you do a show and it's like a big one yeah so, so that yeah. it can't get shut down yeah in advance it's like much. okay we'll just release the location at the very last minute yeah absolutely yep. Yep. yeah So you guys also have a new music video out right now. Um, you just dropped one. I saw it in the link in your Instagram bio, and it actually has a bunch of the Rebellion family in it. You've got Los Fastidios and some of the restarts. Oh, you mean the flares are burning? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. This, is, uh, this was for our acoustic EP. Uh, this was the um, uh, EP that we recorded during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And uh, in general, it was... Um, we wanted to try something new and you you know usually we tour a lot yeah and during the pandemic we were stuck at home and we kind of wanted to work on something new and interesting mm -hmm. and we also wanted to give this message to the people of like remind them about the unity and that they're not just stuck alone at home with all yeah. the problems happening so we wanted to get everyone together the restarts lost of studios we got uh, bands from a lot of uh, countries to do them uh, to do cameos in the video so uh yeah and we were very lucky that at the video is uh, people like it people yeah it was really song. nice yeah. i Thank loved you. the part with the restarts where they had the the, the flares yeah. <laughs> yeah that was yeah. that was awesome actually yeah. i love like all it was of the, all it was the their parts. idea yeah yeah that's they... cool Well, and then speaking of the restarts, one of them is actually filling in for you today, right? Because yes. your DJ couldn't make it. Yeah, that's correct. A DJ couldn't uh, get the visa. So one of us is also uh, doing the DJing and MCing. So and usually, well, uh, when we tour UK, if it's only if it's only two of us, we get Kiron from the restarts. Yeah, who fills in his uh, another MC. Yeah, and we are good friends with the, all of the restarts. And we've toured with UK with them before with, with the actual band, the restarts. And that's amazing. Uh, Kiron will be joining us on stage tonight. That's awesome. Can't, yeah, I can't wait. Can't wait. He uh, he played uh, with his band um, music in our underpants at rebellion yesterday yeah i filmed it and they're they're friends of mine in the pandemic i did a live stream interview with them when they had just started that nice yeah. and it was awesome. pretty comical i was like there was a section of the interview where it was just like oh you're in your okay i'll take my clothes off if you take yours off <laughs> it was like it was just when you look back on those times in the pandemic times it's like what are we doing like yeah, it was Exactly. Getting drunk and taking our clothes off on a live stream. Yeah, yeah. pandemic was crazy. Like Kieran and Colin are gr great, uh, great people. Uh, yeah, I love, love them, them so much. Yeah. Well, so you guys are actually on a tour right now until September, correct? Is it you're doing you're doing a tour around Europe? Yeah, we have a tour. Um, uh, 
we actually gonna have a we're playing rebellion tonight and we're doing a, a festival in france and then we continue on the eastern european tour and a little bit of scandinavia and germany uh, and then yeah until end of september and it sort of started in june so it's like a long tour with some some breaks yeah and so what's going to happen with your member that couldn't get the visa oh well <laughs> is he, he will he, he join the later get the dates? uk visa but okay. he's joining us for the all of the european dates okay so yeah okay because that would be kind of stressful like <laughs> yeah yeah it will be stressful but yeah he's good with uh so everybody coming to europe he's gonna be here yeah don't worry <laughs> But in fact, when we were starting this band, we had this idea in mind that we can play like in any lineup. If somebody can show up, we can do it like two of us. And also we don't have instruments because we started as a DIY band in a really rough uh, situation. So like uh, our first uh, our first idea was just to play like the craziest DIY places. Like, uh, yeah. like uh, once we played in a uh, moving train in a commuter car, there was just punks, uh, like hip hop kids, just occupying this uh, uh, commuter car train and we brought uh, like a small sound system with us and just uh, played played there like rapping over the beat so th that was the idea because back in the day it was really hard to organize a show in Russia uh, for a, like punk anti-fascist uh, like uh, underground hip-hop band and no clubs were going to like work with us so we just were playing like crazy places like warehouses basements uh, forests uh, like this commuter train car once we played a show, uh, we rented like a yoga club, and people there had no idea what was what what what, what, what is coming. And then this like yoga club uh, started like a pretty like hipster place, but people there were like were, were really cool. But they were of course shocked when like uh, a crowd uh, of skinheads and punks just uh, occupied the whole place and started like motion there to some like crazy hip hop uh, music. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, good times. Yeah, that Good is times. that is really wild. But I've seen too that I saw in another interview you guys talked about one of the ways that you traveled the world was you would kind of do these volunteer exchanges where you would be doing like manual labor jobs in exchange to be able to come places. Is that correct? Uh, well, uh, I think what you mean is that uh, we used to travel a lot and doing yeah. like the stuff for like, kind of like work and travel when you get like a visa to go and work some yeah. some simple job. Well, not not all of them are simple. Yeah. yeah but you will, it allows you to get like a visa to go to UK or to US. So we would like go there and do do stuff uh, while mostly just going to shows and stuff and uh, seeing like uh, punk bands play and you know, yeah. like going to hip hop shows. Yeah, usually it happened uh, back in the day. Because... Yeah, it does. It doesn't work like that for a while now. It's, yeah. okay. it's been like more than a decade since this program has been scrapped. So. Oh no! When that was, is that one of the ways that kind of got you over here? You know, being able to perform and stuff as as a DIY band at that time because you were kind of networking and getting to meet people. It's like, hey. In a way, yeah, because meeting people is important. But like, I'd say it was kind of early back when we would just go to shows and see the shows, and then we were still putting together uh, like the ideas of playing music ourselves. So for sure. <laughs> So what kind of things do you guys do to prepare for a tour and to prepare for your set like tonight and the rest of your tour what are some of your rituals if you have any uh rewatch this is spinal tap <laughs> 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 also <laughs> before every tour <laughs> <laughs> also usually we're trying to paint uh, mdb graffiti like every everywhere we go but uh, of course if we have paint and have time and uh, i don't know if we're gonna do that tonight maybe not uh but yeah sometimes sometimes we do that that's awesome that's really cool
But yeah, the rituals, we, we kind of manage the tours ourselves and we manage the band ourselves. So yeah. on long tours, uh, it's usually just busy all the time. And uh, it's when you go on stage is when you finally get to have some fun and get to relax and you do what you actually want to do. Yeah. So that's that's the biggest reward. So that's, uh, but yeah, otherwise just, you know, warming up, making sure that everything is uh, set and uh, we can go 100%. For sure. So what kind of things do you guys have coming up for the rest of the year for the band? We are, well, we have some more European tours and gigs planned for fall. Uh, we are still not announcing those, but it uh, should be good. And uh, we are working on new music. So we're going to have some cool tracks, including some feature features. So it should be fun. So. That's amazing. Yeah, we have some great collaborations. Can you share coming, any of them? Coming soon, not yet, but no. it's going <laughs> it, it gonna, it gonna to be really, really interesting. We are really excited about it and just can't wait to drop that bomb finally. That's awesome. That's very exciting. Well, I'm really excited to see you guys play tonight for the first time. Your music is, it, it's hard to describe. So I'm really excited to, you know, get to see it live after listening to your tracks. And just, I know it's going to be an amazing show, super energetic. And I just want to say thank you for your time today. Thank you very much for having us. A big yeah, pleasure. Thank you very much. A big pleasure. And uh, really, really happy to be on your show. This is Moscow Dead Brigade. And you're watching The Last Rockers TV. <laughs> Hey ho, let's go, we're dead.